Well, uh, we certainly thank the, the, the governor for putting out his, uh, his budget, and, and uh, I am relieved to see some areas that we uh, think that we can find some common ground, like the uh, investing and reading programs for our students, uh, elementary students. Um, uh, overall, uh, frankly, I think uh, um, you know, it was a little bit uninspiring to see that Governor Dayton didn't have any major reforms in the budget, um, no, no big efforts to modernize our state services, and um, you know, th frankly, I think he's missing some opportunities there. Uh, hopefully we can work with him on those things uh, over the course of the next couple of, uh, uh, couple of months or a few months. Um, also disappointed again in, in you know, Governor Dayton's kind of fallback position of always going back to Minnesotans for more tax dollars. Uh, you know, this budget really grows Minnesota government um, again. On top of the last two years of uh, tax increases, one of the largest tax increases in state history, the largest spending increase in state history, uh, this budget uh, that the governor is proposing again um, grows spending in the state of Minnesota by uh, about $1,250, almost $1,250 per man, woman, and child in the state of Minnesota. Um, this is uh, an unsustainable level. We've been kind of warning over, uh, about this for the last couple of years. Um, and, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we think that this is a bit excessive. A significant increase in spending. Uh, we had about a $34 billion budget when the governor took office. It's now going to be $42 billion, roughly, 23% growth of the last couple of budget cycles. Uh, a lot of tax increases we've talked about with transportation, but to me the remarkable thing was what was not in this budget. There is no reform in this budget at all. Uh, there's nothing about what we're going to do with Minsure, no recommendations, no acknowledgement that there is a problem here, that this is not working, that something needs to be done, there aren't enough enrollees to fund it. Governor, what is your plan for Minsure? What is your, how are you going to live up to the promise you made to the people of Minnesota to have a system that works? This doesn't work. Nothing in the budget. Uh, we talk about, uh, and have for years, talked about the need to find a way to address the achievement gap. The fact that you have uh, a large number of kids, especially in the Minneapolis-St. Paul schools, that are failing, not able to graduate from, from uh, public school. Uh, and in the governor's press release, they talk about excellent education for every student. That's what his press release says. And I'll read you. He says, here's the evidence. He promised that he would increase funding for education every year. So I guess if you spend more money, by virtue of that, you have improved education. And I think people are tired of that. You've got a whole group of kids in school today that are going to, they're in middle school or early high school and who are not going to graduate because we don't have any way to make sure that system works for those kids. So there's nothing in this budget that gets at how do we deal with education. He talked about in his inauguration speech that he did not want to spend money doing the same thing over and over again, particularly in education. But that's exactly what this budget does spends more money doing the same things we've done for the last 15 or 20 years, and we have not seen any results so far, and somehow we're expected to believe that that's going to improve education, make it excellent for people of this state. It's just not true. Uh, no reform on uh, taxation or how we do spending. We have a surplus that could be an opportunity for us to make a historic effort to, to structure our tax code in a significant way to encourage investment to attract and retain seniors or military veterans. None of this is a part of his budget. So what are the problems that he's trying to solve with this budget? What are the solutions he's offering? And there isn't any. Minnesotans have dealt with uncertainty the last couple of years. And we heard that as we were on the campaign trail, and we continue to hear that. And the problem today is that Minnesotans will still face uncertainty. Whether they're from Minneapolis or Morris, they're going to face uncertainty, uncertainty in their jobs, uncertainty in their, in their future and uncertainty in their kids' future. And unfortunately, Governor Dayton had an opportunity to ease some of those fears, but he chose not to because the budget he's putting forward today increased spending. I think if you, uh, uh, it was $1,244 per every man, woman, and child. And if you do the math on that, that's $5,000 for a family of four. And all funds budget of more than $7 billion increase. Um, simply put, Minnesotans can't afford that. They can't afford to expend the, they can't afford to pay more for the Democrats' insatiable appetite to spend more.
Uh, Long-term care has been a big priority for uh, for the uh, House Republicans and I think the Senate Republicans as well. We know that there are problems with the funding of our nursing homes. Uh, we know that uh, Greater Minnesota really uh, needs some solutions that uh, are going to help them uh, maintain the, the nursing homes in a way that really show their loved ones and, and our aging population that we uh, the respect that they deserve. So um, uh, the governor does not put any new money into that, and, and that is a disappointment as well. Yes, there is money being spent in education, but what problem is it solving? We have real problems in education, achievement problems, and the funding is not directed to solve that problem at all. And, and, and I guess the claim that he's making is, I promise to spend more in education every year, and I'm doing it, and that is tagged under the headline, Excellent Education. And my question is, does spending more money year after year result in excellent education? We have, we know, kids who are failing are not able to get through the, the system uh, and are not being helped. And that has been going on for years, ever since I've been here at least. And why we wouldn't take this opportunity to try to figure out how to solve that problem rather than just saying, well, more money will do it. We've been trying the more money route for decades. And that, that problem persists. So there needs to be an opportunity, an effort, on the part of the governor to say, we're going to fix this problem. We're going to make real headway on this. And there's nothing in the budget that gets at that. One thing you had sort of, you sort of put under that umbrella this morning was this child care tax credit. Um, where do you guys come down? Well, uh, I guess uh, uh, generally we support the idea of child care tax credits. I, I think that uh, uh, there are some people that maybe uh, are left out of that. If, you, if you're a married couple and you don't have your kids in child care, then I guess you don't get a credit, a tax credit for having kids. I, I don't know. I think there are things that we need to look at, but we're certainly in favor of, of trying to reduce taxes on people. We're, we're, we're in favor of that. Not only is this billion dollar surplus uh, you know, going to be eaten up by, by uh, inflation, but really three quarters of it comes from spending being lower than projected. Um, and I think we'll probably learn a lot at the next uh, revenue forecast. It was, the, I mean, this last revenue forecast was the first time in five years or ten forecasts that they actually downgraded the revenues in the next biennium. So uh, obviously we, you know, we can, we can uh, take from this that uh, Minnesota's economy has not responded well to the huge tax increases that the Democrats put in place over the last two years. Um, we hope that that's not a trend. We hope that it was just a blip. Um, we think that the, the lower gas prices will help, will help Minnesota families by leaving some more money in their family budgets. And hopefully that'll, uh, we'll see that in the way of increased spending and increased uh, sales tax collections for, this, for the state. But that's what we'll, we'll be watching for. Um, you're right. I mean, he is spending every penny of this. Um, we are also a little disappointed in the lack of, uh, you know, returning some of this money back to Minnesotans. The only uh, real, real tax credit or, or tax refund for anybody is the, uh, the child care tax credit, which really I'm not sure he's putting in the right place either. Uh, with a with an upper limit of $124,000 uh, per year of income uh, as the qualifier on the top end, I'm not sure that that's necessarily the folks that need that sort of a tax credit. Um, and while we think that the tax credit is good, uh, we think it probably will need some tweaking. So, um, But really, I think you know what Minnesotans want and need are more better paying jobs in the state of Minnesota. And I don't see really anything in this budget uh, that helps our economy grow and helps our, uh, our, our private sector create more jobs. And, and really, I think that's what's going to help Minnesota families the most. Um, and instead of putting more money into family budgets, which is what we think will help families, uh, Governor Dayton is focusing here on taking more money out of family budgets.